I'm Lauren Young, and this is a presentation of one of the cropping systems experiments of the REACH project, which aims to enhance the sustainability of Pacific Northwest cereal production. This project, located at the Wilkie Research Farm outside of Davenport, Washington, was established when the REACH project began and is targeted at investigating cropping system diversification with oil seeds in the intermediate dryland zone. The main questions supporting research at this site are, what are the impacts of replacing fallow with an oil seed in terms of soil carbon levels, nitrogen use, water use, yield, and economics across the rotation? And alternatively, what are the impacts of keeping the fallow year prior to winter wheat but replacing a year of spring wheat with an oil seed? We are asking these questions because soil carbon is lost during summer fallow and cropping intensification may be a way to maintain soil carbon stores. Oil seeds are also a main focus because there is great interest in oil seed production in the tri-state area. Here you see that canola acreage in the tri-state area has increased in the past four years. For farmers who are growing canola, we want to be able to provide information on the best research supported practices. In this study, we are comparing a variety of possible options for including oil seeds in rotation. We'll go through each of the rotations in sequence. In this first option, we are comparing the traditional crop rotation that includes a fallow every third year to a rotation that replaces fallow with oil seeds. Here you see we have a winter wheat, spring wheat, chemical fallow rotation compared to a winter wheat, spring wheat, spring oil seed rotation. In order to determine if the oil seeds themselves have a positive impact in the system, we are also evaluating a rotation where spring wheat is used to eliminate fallow. So the rotation you see added here is winter wheat, spring wheat, spring wheat. This is a four-year rotation that incorporates oil seeds by using a spring camelina to replace the fallow. This final four-year rotation includes an oil seed, but does not use it to eliminate fallow. Instead, the spring canola follows winter wheat, replacing one year of spring wheat. This would mean not compromising winter wheat planting dates, but still including the broadleaf canola for greater herbicide options for weed control and general cropping diversity. At this point, all results are preliminary. It will take more iterations of the crop sequence to draw real conclusions about how the system works but some initial findings are available. For example, when fallow is eliminated, it is likely that planting of winter wheat will be pushed to a little later in the fall as one must wait for soil water recharge after the oilseed crop is harvested. In 2012, this led to approximately one month difference in the timing of planting of winter wheat. As you see in the photo, there's quite a visible difference in winter wheat growth following fallow, which is on the right, and winter wheat planted after the harvest of a spring planted crop, which is the photo on the left. By the middle of the season, these differences in vegetative growth were much less visible, but yield values would offer the final diagnosis of how the system is changing with fallow elimination. Data from the winter wheat planting that was harvested in 2013 does indicate a slight decrease in winter wheat yield when the winter wheat is planted into the previously cropped field. Due to field conditions, our 2013 planting of winter wheat into fallow and into recrop was done on the same day. Because of this, when we have data from the 2014 harvest, we will have a better sense that any yield differences are likely the result of soil moisture or other rotational considerations, rather than just the result of differences in the number of growing degree days. While one's gut response may be that any yield decrease is having a negative impact on the economics of the system, you must remember that an additional cropping year has been realized, where the land has produced a crop instead of the zero returns of fallow. As the REACH project progresses, we hope to be able to share more information about the economics involved with the elimination of a fallow year. Additionally, it is surely worth noting that we have a possible rotational impact when winter wheat follows canola when compared to following spring wheat. This has been an introduction to one of our REACH cropping systems experiments funded by USDA NIFA. Results are ongoing, and more information can be found online at reachpna.org.